All right, thank you. Um, uh, I'm Danny Yagan. I'm a colleague of Ted's here in the economics department at Berkeley. Um, it's great to follow our first two speakers here with some perspectives from my own service uh, in the US government on uh, truth and transparency in US policy making and analysis. So um, I'll provide um, lessons from three experiences. The first, you know, very much in line with what we just heard is budgeting. Um, you know, do things pay for, are, are things paid for? What's that, what is that gonna do to debt and deficits? Um, and then turn to more what the executive branch does in the United States, the government uh, execution part, cost benefit analysis. And then as Ted previewed, um, some work that I was uh, intimately involved in with greater data sharing for arm's length research um, that can provide more transparency in the process. And a couple lessons are that, you know, press nonprofits and the courts in the United States impose in a sense some requirement for transparency that that kind of constrains the political incentives um, and keeps us hopefully in a cone of reasonableness. And there's more that Congress um, and outsiders can do um, in order to uh, keep the incentives aligned to further constrain the cone of reasonableness um, to get to the best possible outcomes. So um, uh, in the White House, one of the major things that happens every year is the production of a budget. Um, this is, whoops, it's very political in the sense that it is something that the president is trying to pass through Congress. So everything's political, but this is something that they actually need politics to move on. Um, this is the proposals for how much each department is going to get for spending um, and then how they're going to pay uh, for that. And also, you know, new programs like universal pre-kindergarten, et cetera. Um, and in this uh, document, there is uh, requirements from Congress to explain what that's going to do um, to debt and deficits over the long run. Um, and uh, there are some constraints on what people can do um, uh, to fudge the numbers. So everyone in power, that depends on which party you're in, it always has an agenda. And there's plenty of people in the room who just do not care about the facts. They just want to put on a good sales pitch um, and have good press reports and have people go about, you know, and pass the pass a bill. Um, and what happens for this very political document is that um, press and nonprofits end up constraining the White House from, you know, um, uh, just saying whatever they want. And that's because of a tradition of transparency um, uh, that we can think about building up over time. So for debt and deficits, here's from um, President Trump's first budget. Um, this shows that debt as a share of GDP was projected under President Trump's policies to go to zero um, over you know, the next generation. Of course, um, he, you know, the president could have just said this, um, but because Congress has required that there has to be some kind of analysis, and they don't want to look like they're the first administration in history to just say, no, we're gonna put out a one-page fact sheet and that's it, that's our analysis. They have to put together this, this chart and then they have to explain where this comes from. Can I get some help with the mouse? And that you know, debt going to zero comes because unlike other entities which think real growth rates will be 2%, the Trump administration said that they'll be 3% thanks to their cutting of taxes. So they actually have to say where this comes from. And then that lets the, um, the ecosystem, can I switch slides again? Like nonprofits, you know, the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget, typically seen as right of center to say, this is phony growth. We need tough choices, not wishful thinking in order to fix the debt. Um, when I was in government, um, it was a different um, degree, but there's always this 
dynamic. And the fact that you have to be transparent, there's this tradition of transparency, Congress required it, and there's a long tradition. And if you're the first one ever to not be transparent, that is terrible and makes you look like a joke, um, that you have to be transparent, and then you'll get called on it if you're, if you're outside a cone of reasonableness. So this doesn't mean that it's that you get the best predictions and you get the best, you know, what we think that will be going forward. Um, but it's within a cone of reasonableness. Um, uh, and the, 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 the Trump budget was kind of the exception that proved the rule. And so I think this kind of shows um, the scope of, of what can be done. You know, you, you either create a tradition of, of transparency for this, you know, very political act that the White House does, or, and if I can advance again, um, you set up uh, uh, arm's length analysis to do it for you. So for things that aren't out of, you know, coming straight out of the White House, um, Congress has its own nonpartisan congressional budget office that they have set up to be official scorekeepers. And they actually require lots of other, you know, kind of very down the middle transparent analyses that are that have no political spin on them um, from the executive branch, but don't come from the White House. So this is the trustees report for Social Security, very in line with what we just saw from uh, the Chilean pension context that this comes from the Secretary of the Treasury and the Department of Labor Secretary who you know, work for the president, but it's enough arm's length and there's enough tradition that this is not where the spin is put on, the political spin is put on. It's, you know, there's a tradition and Congress requires this and the more that we can do, the better. Um, and I'm gonna point out where this does not exist yet in American governments, um, in a, in a robust way, which is in the cost benefit and the uh, analysis of regulations. So um, if the Environmental Protection Agency wants to regulate um, fossil fuel emissions, say, Congress has said that the, the Department of Energy, the Environmental Protection Agency shall make regulations that satisfy a cost benefit analysis. So if you're gonna make power plants put on scrubbers that take out the carbon dioxide of the filthy air before it goes out, it has to be shown that the benefits of doing so exceed the costs. That is Congress setting up a system where future governments that may be in control by the other party can't just run amok and do whatever they want. And that separation of powers um, has helped to make these types of analyses done and force them to be transparent because you have to defend them in court. So um, the Office of Management Budget where I worked has this incredibly influential component called the Office of Information Regulator and Regulatory Affairs, OIRA, which is in charge of making sure that all the rules that come out of an administration can stand up in court. And there are very onerous um, uh, uh, processes that go along with this, including that you post it online. Um, you know, here's the Environmental Protection Agency website, cost, uh, economic and cost analysis for air pollution regulations, and you can go to the regulatory impact analyses and see, because they, they know they have to defend this in court, it's got to be public anyway, so it has to pass some certain muster. What's lacking in this system is a, is a congressional budget office, official scorekeeper, kind of, are we putting spin on the ball? So the courts will throw something out if it's awful, but there's no one who's saying like, this is the closest thing to truth that we, that we think of and that doesn't have spin on the ball from, from an executive branch. And thinking about how Congress can set this up or nonprofits can set this up, I think can be another you know, uh, tool in the arsenal. Um, and finally, um, you know, who is doing these arm's length analyses? Um, I think one area that has been um, underutilized and can be further utilized is um, academic and, and, uh, and some governmental um, uh, research within government with closed data. So thinking about US tax returns, those are private data, you cannot make them public. But what you can do is you can bring researchers in either from the Census Bureau or from academia to you know, take special sworn status and work in approved safe government computers to answer questions that 
help us understand whether like the government is doing what they are trying to do. You know, in 2021, there was an expanded child tax credit trying to reach um, uh, families, even if they don't file tax returns. That's hard to know if you're doing a good job because they didn't file the tax return. How do you know if they exist? You have to do data sharing between the treasury department with the tax returns and the census bureau, which does the US census for all families. And I helped bring together the different parties to expedite the data sharing. Um, and there's a report that will be made public soon um, that tries to say like, you know, how, how well did um, these types of programs do um, uh, in, in reaching the people that they're trying to reach. And so kind of how does that make sense and how do we tie that back to, you know, a very political aim? The White House wants to say that they, you know, did everything perfectly all the time. And I think the more you can set up below, the, beneath the radar, oh, it's academic researchers, you know, they're going to do these data and you, and you set up the traditions of this, it's kind of like the tradition of uh, a transparent budget analysis that can be uh, fact-checked by the outside. The more that there's a tradition of researchers in this room and researchers at the Census Department, which is very arm's length, um, analyzing these types of programs on a regular basis, the less that you know an unpleasant result could be suppressed um, uh, in, in a future um, administration. And Congress can actually request that this be done to further constrain, um, you know, politically motivated uh, uh, executive branch. So, those were some lessons, and looking forward to your uh, questions in the in the Q and A. Thanks.